Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and start talking about implicit differentiation. So what exactly is that? Well, before we talk about what that is, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the difference between explicit functions and implicit functions. So an explicit function is pretty much what we've been dealing with so far up to this point. Um, let's just list a few examples here. So y equals 2x plus 3. Okay, this is an example of an explicit function because here y is expressed explicitly as a function of x. So here we have y by itself on one side of the equal sign, and then everything else on the other side just has x's and numbers. Okay, there's no other y's showing up anywhere. So y equals 2x plus 3 explicitly. Um, another slightly more complicated example is y equals uh, the sine of x squared plus 5 minus the natural log of x. Okay, so it's a bit more complicated, but uh, still, we have y by itself on one side and uh, of the equal sign, and everything else on the other side is just x's and numbers and functions, I guess. Um, but here, y is expressed explicitly as this function of x here. All right. So um, another example would be x squared y minus 4y equals x plus 1. So... Uh, at first glance, this doesn't look explicit, right, because y is not by itself, but we can actually solve for y, and we'll have a unique uh, answer. So x squared y minus 4y, uh, we can factor a y from the left side, and we're going to have y times the quantity x squared minus 4 equals x plus 1. Divide both sides by x squared minus 4, and then y equals x plus 1 over x squared minus 4. All right, so here, um, in its original form, it didn't really look explicit at first glance, but we could actually solve that for y, and we have this unique answer here. So y uh, can be explicitly expressed as this function of x up here, uh, x plus 1 over x squared minus 4. Okay, so these are all examples of explicit functions. Um, it's all the kind of stuff we've been looking at so far. Uh, we've always been able to say y equals this function of x. So an implicit function is one where you can't really do that. So for implicit functions, you might be able to solve for y, but you might not get something unique. Um, in which case, you could still kind of treat it explicitly. It just depends on what you're doing, but you'd have to be really careful. Um, but that's a technical detail we don't really need to worry about so much. Uh, or another type of implicit function would be you just can't solve for y at all. So let's list some examples here. Um, y cubed minus sine of x equals 4 plus y. Okay, so um, technically speaking you could get y uh, expressed as a function of x but you would have uh, three different ones because it's y cubed here um, and it would just be a huge mess also. So it's not really something that would be pleasant um, for whatever you're doing it might be better just to treat it implicitly um, but here uh, for all intents and purposes you can pretty much treat this implicitly. Um, Let's do, or let's look at some other examples here. Uh, e to the y plus cosine of y squared equals x cubed minus 1. So for something like this, uh, there's just no way that you're going to be able to get y by itself on one side of the equal sign. So here, y is being expressed implicitly as a function of x. Same thing up here, too. Um, y is implicitly a function of x. So uh, the important thing to remember is that y is still a function of x, just like it is over here, but the only difference is over here, um, we can't express what it is explicitly, but we can still work with it, and we'll talk about that soon. <coughs> uh, let's list two more examples here. So uh, we can also have something like natural log of y minus 2x equals uh, the tangent of the quantity x plus y, and then plus 1. So here's another example where we are not going to be able to get y by itself, um, but y is still a function of x, so this is an, uh, an, another example uh, where y is an implicit function of x. All right. So let's list one more. Um, x squared y to the fifth uh, minus 6x equals 4y minus 13. Okay, so here's another example where y is an implicit function of x. Okay, so um, as we mentioned briefly, uh, y is still a function of x, so you can still kind of do the same sort of stuff that you would do with explicit functions. 
Um, and what have we been doing with explicit functions? Well, we've been finding derivatives, right, and doing uh, a few things with those. We can still do that with implicit functions, but it's going to be a little more complicated uh, because we don't have this kind of luxury here where, you know, with explicit functions, we can just say, okay, y equals stuff with x. But with implicit functions, we can't really do that. Um, but because y is still the function of x, uh, we can find the derivative. So we can find stuff like uh, dy dx or y primed, which is the same thing, right? Just a derivative. Um, and, you know, slopes of the curve, slope of the tangent line, all that good stuff. Uh, instantaneous rate of change. Remember, that's all the same thing. It's all the derivative. Um, and because y is a function of x, we can do that. So how do we do that? Well, for the rest of this video, we're going to talk briefly about how to do that. Um, and then over the next few videos, we'll do some examples. Uh, we'll actually go through all four of these here. Um, and then do some other ones as well. Uh, so for the rest of this video, for now, let's just go ahead and talk about um, how we actually do it, and then we'll do some full examples with these and some more later on. So implicit differen uh, differentiation is actually pretty much uh, just the chain rule. Okay, we're just going to be using the chain rule. So let's say, um, for example, so this isn't really going to be a full example, but it'll just kind of illuminate the process a little bit, and then it'll become much more clear uh, over the next few videos. So uh, let's say we have y to the fifth, and we want to differentiate that with respect to x. Okay. So what is y? We don't really know what y is. All we know is that y is a function of x. Okay. So how are we going to differentiate that? Well, before we do this, let's go ahead and um, look at another example that we're already kind of used to. And then this will make much more sense, uh, hopefully. So let's say we want to differentiate uh, x cubed plus 1 to the fifth. Okay. So instead of jumping right into this guy up here, let's do a specific example um, of something that we kind of already know how to do. So what is this? This is a function inside of another function, right? This is uh, going to be, we're going to use the chain rule for this. So the chain rule says, um, if you want to take a derivative of this, it's going to be the derivative of the big guy, right? Uh, and what's the big guy? The big guy is raising things to the fifth, okay? So the derivative of the big guy is going to be this, five, times something inside to the fourth, okay? Um, but what's on the inside? Just the little guy. Okay, derivative of the big guy, evaluated at the little guy. So this is going to be x cubed plus one. And then chain rule says multiply by the derivative of the little guy. ddx of x cubed plus 1. Okay, So that's what we have there. Um, so this is what the chain rule says. Yeah, we can continue with this, but uh, for what we're doing here, we don't really need to. Um, but of course, the derivative of this would be 3x squared, but uh, that's irrelevant for what we're doing here. So the point here is this is just straight up basic chain rule. Okay, um, And we've done a bunch of stuff with this. So ddx of x cubed plus 1 to the fifth is going to be 5 times the quantity x cubed plus 1 to the fourth times the derivative of x cubed plus 1. So derivative of the big guy, evaluated at the little guy, multiplied by the derivative of the little guy. Okay. So this exact same process is going to be used up here. Uh, but now instead of uh, this function of x here, we just have y. And what is y? We don't know what y is. But again, uh, we don't really care what y is. So the same thing is going to happen. We're going to do um, chain rule. Derivative of the big guy, 5, times something to the fourth. But what's going to be the something? Well, it's going to be the little guy. But what's the little guy? The little guy is y. Okay, so remember, y is a function of x, but implicitly. Okay, so y is implicitly a function of x. And then we take y and raise it to the fifth power. Okay, so it's a function inside of a function. Just like this is a function inside of a function. Okay, but this uh, is an explicit function inside of a function. Because we're explicitly saying x cubed plus 1. But up here, we're just saying y. We have no clue what y is, but we don't really care. So derivative of the big guy evaluated at the little guy multiplied by the derivative of the little guy. So multiplied by ddx of the little guy. And the little guy is just y. So um, this is going to simplify to, well, not really simplify, but we can just write it uh, in a better format. So 5y to the fourth times uh, dy dx. OK. And we can maybe just drop that, too. So if we want to take a derivative of y to the fifth with respect to x, that's just going to be 5y to the fourth dy dx. Um, 
And that's pretty much what implicit differentiation is. Um, when you're differentiating stuff that has x in it, you just treat it normally. But if you see a y there, uh, then you gotta use the chain rule to get this dy dx factor here. Um, and some people like to write it uh, 5y to the fourth y primed. And that's uh, good to do that if you've been doing it for a while. Um, dy dx is probably better to use it first because you can just sort of see it at a glance. Um, and the y primed, if you write it too quickly, then you might get confused and think that's an exponent. Um, but in any case, dy dx and y primed, of course, are the same thing. So it's, uh, it's all the same. Um, let's see another example of something like this, uh, just real quick. So let's say um, we want to find the derivative of the sine of y. Okay, d dx of sine of y. Um, what's that going to be? All right, so um, it's pretty much going to be the same idea as what we did up here. So um, let's go ahead and do just a specific example where we have something with x instead of y just to see how it's going to play out. So before we jump right into this, uh, let's go ahead and see uh, a different example first real quick. Let's say we want d dx of the sine of 4x squared minus uh, 3, just for example. Okay. So let's uh, zoom in a little bit also. All right, so before we jump right into this guy, we're going to take a look at this down here. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so uh, this is chain rule, right? So here we have a function inside of another function. So the big guy is sine, all right? And the little guy is what's on the inside. So the chain rule says derivative of the big guy, okay? The big guy is sine, so its derivative is cosine. So derivative of the big guy evaluated at the little guy multiplied by the derivative of the little guy. Okay, uh, and yeah, the derivative of the little guy is 8x, but that doesn't matter for what we're doing here. So the point is, um, I just want to show you that this is just chain rule here. Let's zoom out just a little bit. Um, so that's what's going on here. We're going to use the same idea for this one up here. So d dx of sine of y, now we just have y instead of 4x squared minus 3, but it's still a function inside of another function. Because remember, uh, y is implicitly a function of x, and it's stuck inside of the sine, so it's function inside of a function. So that's function composition, which means chain rule. So chain rule says uh, d dx of sine of y is going to be derivative of the big guy, okay, derivative of the big guy, evaluated at the little guy, multiplied by the derivative of the little guy. Okay, and the, um, the derivative of the little guy is d dx of y, because the little guy is just y in this case. Okay, so, um, and just like before, we can write that in a better format. So we could say cosine of y uh, dy dx. Or we could say cosine y, y primed, but then we have to be kind of careful um, about what's inside the cosine and what's not, and so on and so forth. So it's not a bad idea to put these parentheses here. Um, but anyway, so the point here is that implicit differentiation really is just um, a special application of the chain rule. Maybe not even so much an application, it just it pretty much is the chain rule. Um, but now instead of explicit functions of x here, you just have a y, and y itself uh, implicitly is a function of x. So we have to treat it as such with the chain rule. So we'll see some examples over the next few videos.